<laughs> Where is that voice coming from? God? <laughs> to be in the truth and I will daily lift my hands 
this joy I can't contain it Caught up in the fellowship Caught up in the fellowship Jesus, you are so amazing This joy I can't contain it Caught up in the fellowship Caught up in the fellowship Jesus, you are so amazing This joy I can't contain it
Good morning, mighty men and women of God. Say after me, I am a man or woman of potential. Never heard you. Let's say it again. I am a man or woman of potential. This is how God sees me. Say that again. This is how God sees me. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. Amen and amen. Another great day in the Santa Maria Valley Healing Rooms, huh? I'm going to copy what Rick says. It's never a bad day in here. I was just sitting down here before and I'm thinking, what a blessing that this is my job, for want of a better word, <laughs> to come in here and every day and hear this incredible worship that we have. Yes. To pray for people and see the incredible miracles and healings that take place in here. Wow, it's a tough job. <laughs> And I'm going to talk about one of my favourite subjects today, and I'm going to talk about miracles. Ooh, yeah. everyone say miracles. miracles. Yeah. You know, the Bible is full of miracles. I love it. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And that means for the old people and the young people, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm getting naughty already. I'll get in trouble. I want to welcome those watching on podcast. And today, as we get on with our message, 
I want you to claim your miracle too, as well as everyone sitting here. Amen. God has not stopped miracles. You're looking at one actually. Five years ago, I won't go too much. Most of you know the story, but I was legally blind, paralyzed in a wheelchair after a, 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 a knee replacement surgery. And the next day, a, a blood clot went up to my mind and put me in a brain injury, coma, wheelchair. I'm not blind anymore. Thank you, Jesus. It's a miracle. I can walk now. Thank you, Jesus. The brain injury, well, that's still debatable, amen. <laughs> I, I, come on, you're supposed to say amen to you out there, okay? Stop laughing, you lot. I thought you were my friend. And <laughs> okay, well, it's a bit of a debate in the family. My, my kids tell me I had a brain injury before I had the stroke. You know? <laughs> anyway, it's a miracle that I'm up here, amen? And so... If you're sitting here today listening or watching, I want you to claim your miracle today. And we're going to pray for that. And as born again Christians, it is our inheritance, our promise from God to move in the miraculous. And you know what? There's a second promise there. It's not only a one-off occasion. It can be numerous. I love it. Every week, I'm thinking, what miracles am I going to see this week, Lord? What are you going to show me this week? It's, it's a wonderful thing. Yes. So I'm going to say to that, whoopee! <laughs> Not the whoopee cushion, but whoopee, okay. <laughs> I'm in trouble already, aren't I? <laughs> never mind. The spirit of joy never left me, amen. So what is a miracle, folks? It's something from the supernatural world of God that happens right here on earth. It's something we can't do ourselves. We can't just click our finger and make it happen. And miracles happen because of the miraculous of the Holy Spirit. He's the one that does the miracles. And yet, guess what? As followers of Jesus Christ, He lives inside you and me. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit, amen? Some of our temples are a bit bigger than others. That's to contain the bigger anointing, all right? We'll leave it at that. Is that all right, Papa? <laughs> <laughs> Miracles can be gradual or instantaneous. We look where Jesus prayed for the 10 lepers. It's one of the stories that intrigues me in the Bible. They went looking for this man that could heal lepers and they found him. He talked to them and they went away. They were still lepers. He never prayed for them. How did they get healed? They got healed out of obedience. He told them to go to the priest. And the priest, I think, in those days, from what I can make out, it was a four or five miles walk they had to get there or something like that. And on the way, they were healed. So friends, when you're obedient to God, you're going to receive a miracle. Miracles involve the gift of faith, when I was lying in bed, paralyzed and everything, I was speaking words of faith over myself. The scriptures of healing. You are the God that healeth me. I am crippled. Lord, you raised the cripple. Will you raise me? You healed the blind. I'm blind, Lord. Will you heal me? And that's what he did. Prayers of pity will get his attention, but prayers of faith will get his response. Amen. So forget about praying prayers of sympathy. Nothing happens. It's prayers of faith that make things happen. Here at the Santa Maria Valley Healing Rooms in beautiful Santa Maria, Central Coast, California, USA, the world, we see frequent miracles happening here on a regular basis. But friends, God's miracles are just not confined to physical miracles. They can be everything in different areas. I'm going to tell you a couple about what happened to me and Sabrina. I remember the first time I saw a lady get out of a wheelchair. It was back in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, 95. We had a meeting and we had an altar call. And out of the corner of my eye, I see this lady pushing herself up to the stage. I've got no faith at all for this. In fact, I remember saying, Lord, would you send her to Sabrina instead of me? 
The Lord didn't hear my prayer. <laughs> she zeroed in on me. She had a target set on me. And I'm up on stage. So I got to walk down two or three steps until I meet her. And I talked to her and prayed for her. Then I turned around and walked back to the stage and started walking up the steps and screaming erupted and applause erupted. I turned around and the woman was a foot behind me walking. I actually missed it. <laughs> I talked to her. She'd been 23 years in a wheelchair. And I saw her that night going home from the meeting, pushing the wheelchair. I'll never forget it. I've only seen that lady once, but I will recognise her immediately again. I will never forget that night. The next morning she walked into the meeting. And as I talked to her during the lunch break, she said the previous night she went home, rang the doorbell and her husband answered the door and she walked in in front of him for the first time in their married life. Can you imagine his eyes? <laughs> Can you imagine mine? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's happened in 95, but I'll tell you what, I'm very emotional about it now. Lord, never, never let me lose that emotion, that compassion. Imagine seeing your wife walk. We had a week of miracles that week. We had a little Mexican girl that was deaf. And we prayed and cast a deaf and dumb spirit out and had the CD going over the loudspeaker. And the first word she heard was the name Jesus. She went back to school and she, she came back three days in a row with a note from the teacher. She's forgotten her hearing aids and she, they didn't believe for three days that she could hear. And then they tested her. There was a lady there who had... Uh, her back, backbone and much of her back skeleton had disintegrated by a disease and she had steel rods set in her backside up to her neck so she was rigid like a plank, like a, like a steel beam. We prayed for her and we didn't have digital, digital cameras in those days but she bent over and touched her toes. It's like God put a U-joint in her back. Then the very next night she brought the doctor to the meeting and he te testified what it was before and what it is now. You know what I mean? Oh, Let's give the Lord a clap already. Amen. Yeah. Ooh. And, uh, and so just for ourselves, I want to talk a little bit about miracles of provision. And Jesus did those. The loaves and fishes. When you read that story, the multiplication of the loaves and fishes never started until they were given out. And that's the key, for, folks. When you give out, you'll receive. Amen? When we flew from uh, New Zealand to America to live in 2001 February, we lost 69% of our finance overnight on currency exchange. The New Zealand dollar then was worth 39 cents American. We took a huge hit. But God told us to come, and we've got to put our faith in God. Amen? God is bigger than the world's financial system. We don't need to rely on our, whatever they call it, 5013 CK, whatever it is, I don't know, <laughs> retirement plan or something. It's nice to have it, but I've never had one. I've never had insurance, so I came here. <laughs> and, so, and so we lost that money. We go to Kansas City. We're joining I, IHOP Kansas City. It's just starting. We were there for the first night when it went 24-7. We got a car. Someone bought us a car when we were there. It's a well-known person. I won't tell you, but it's well-known. And then two years later, we were asked, we need some house parents. Would you like to become house parents and live financially free? Don't pay any rent. Didn't take us long to say yes to that. <laughs> One of those ones that was in our house was Misty Edwards. You've heard her singing at IHOP. And so many, many things. And then after two years, my darling wife, my prophetic wife said, God just told me last night that we're to buy a house. And I go, Hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> you know, there's an expression that came out of the 1920s. That's a real doozy. It was an expression for when a Duesenberg car went past. People would say, wow, that's a real doozy. We say that. <laughs> In incredibility today, don't we? So we made an appointment to see the bank man. How are you, Mr. Walsh? Good. 
this, I'm thinking this will be over pretty quick. <laughs> he said, right, who do you work for? And I said, uh, well, I don't actually work for, but I go to IHOP. He says, is that the house of pancakes? I said, no, no. <laughs> IHOP was just starting then. They didn't know the International House of Prayer. He said, oh. <laughs> it's actually quite good. I, I, the house of pancakes actually gave, gave us IHOP people a discount when we went there. So I quite regularly had a bit of an outreach there across the table. Thank you, IHOP, for feeding IHOP. And the bank man said, OK, Mr Walsh, have you got a credit rating? I said, no, I haven't got one. So I had one in New Zealand, but I haven't got one here. He said, OK. Um, how much did you earn last year? I said, oh, we earned $15,000. That's below the poverty level. <laughs> and I, I remember saying, well, I think I'm going to have a good year next year. We might earn 20000 and he says, oh, okay, Mr. Walsh. And I'm thinking, we have an expression down under. When things aren't going too well, it's going down the gurgler, like water goes down the sink. Like, and I remember saying, this is going down the gurgler real bad. <laughs> he said, right, oh, Mr. Walsh, uh, we'll be in contact with you. And we have another expression in New Zealand when we have a, hear an incredible story. We say, yeah, right. And I remember saying to him, yeah, right. <laughs> the next day we got the call. We got the mortgage. Hey, let's give the Lord a clap. As I said before, his banks are more bigger than the earthly banks. Amen. We saw the provision in the Bible where he did that too, where he got the, the gold out of the fish's mouth. Remember that? The Lord can do it. Uh, provision of food. When we lived in Kansas City, we were involved in feeding the homeless in the inner city. When we first started there, we didn't have a base down there, so we used to cook food and take it down, or I'd take my grill down in the back of the truck. And so we had, you know those big two-handed pots you can buy, that look like commercial ones? We used to make two of those of chili, you know what I mean? And take it down and feed the homeless. And one day, we had about 20, 30, 40 people turn up, and we're just feeding out of the van. We're sitting in the van feeding them, you know, and we didn't think about it much, but when we finished, we tidied up. Both the pots were still full. <laughs> the level never dropped. And uh, our son got married over there the first, first uh, year we were there, and we had some people come from New Zealand for the wedding, and we, we were praying, Lord, we got no furniture for them and no food. The Saturday before the wedding, two truckloads of furniture turned up. People came to IHOP and said, we're moving. Do you know anyone who needs the furniture? <laughs> and they brought it round. We got tables, chairs, everything. And then uh, that same night, some people come round and bought us leftovers from uh, Panera Bread. You know Panera Bread, they, they don't make junky food really, you know what I mean? It's a quality place. So that night we were able to feed all our guests from Panera Food. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap again. So we saw many miracles healing the homeless. You know, we'd be working on the streets and on one corner the prostitutes were working on the other corner the, the drug dealers were handling out their dope and we were in the middle of it, you know. I loved it. <laughs> so there's another occasion. We're down in the inner city. I was cooking on the grill cooking sausages and hot dogs, stuff like that. We'd finished for the night, we cleaned up. Then uh, I closed the lid and we're just talking and a fa two families turned up. Is there any food? We're hungry. So we prayed and I went over to the grill and I opened the lid and there were 20 perfectly cooked sausages there. All in a row. I knew they were from heaven, why? If they had been me, there would have been burn marks on them. <laughs> We gave them out that food, provision from heaven. Amen. And so, uh, where are we here? Financial miracles. We fed the homeless. And so, they just continued to go on and on. And so, I want to encourage you today to believe in the impossible. One of the titles that is used to describe Jesus is immutable, which means he never changes. He is still the miracle working God. 
So if you're sitting here today and you're watching on TV today or computer, claim the miracle you need. Now, don't, don't be stupid if you're watching and you claim it. God's not going to let you win water, lotto, okay? Or, or the, I've never seen that happen. My daughter used to work in the, when she was at high school. She's amazed about the number of Christians come in and said, God's going to told them they were going to win lotto. <laughs> never happened. And so um, some of the miracles you can pray for, raising the dead. You got to know someone that's near dying or just died, pray for them to be raised, amen? Lazarus, the widow's son, Jairus' daughter. Food, we talked about that. Jesus walked on water. Who else walked with him on water? Can you remember? Peter. How many times did he walk? He walked out there and he walked back. More than once, okay? Clothing and shoes. The Israelites walked for 40 years in the desert. Nothing was worn out. There was no Target or Walmart there. And one you probably haven't thought of, the demoniac at the tomb. He was naked, met Jesus. When they came back, he was fully clothed, sitting at the feet of Jesus in his right mind. Jesus provided his clothing as well as healing him. Who provided the baskets that clicked up the leftovers from the loaves and fishes? They were away out in the wilderness. Hello? Miracle of provision. So if you're a basket case, Jesus can heal you. Amen? Amen. Moses was a basket case once, amen, when he was in the river. <laughs> oh, that's right. Some of you get it. Take a little while, okay? <laughs> Miracles of nature. The Red Sea. Amazing. I love that story. You hear all these theories about how they're trying not, it just doesn't stand up, does it? And the reversing of the River Jordan by Joshua. Can you imagine a river going backwards? <laughs> I think I'd like to see that more than the sea. <laughs> Healing miracles. Blind. The deaf and dumb. Cripples. Lepers. Jesus healed individuals with miracles. He healed groups with miracles. And large, large crowds. Miracles are not a problem for Jesus. Miracles are our inheritance. So who here today has experienced a miracle? Put your hands up. Wow, lots of hands up. Who wants a miracle today? Okay, we're going to get one, amen? amen? It's our inheritance. So I want you to follow me in a prayer. That's everyone. Lord, I believe you are a miracle working God today. Lord, I need a miracle. Now just claim to yourself the miracle that you need. I'll give you five seconds. Ooh. That was enough time, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know whether you can pick that up on TV, but we had a clock just going off there. It must be someone's phone. Oh, that was just in time. Thank you, Lord. You have a habit of that. I need a miracle, whether it's my health, my finances, my job, accommodation. Jesus got accommodation. Look at the day of Pentecost. How many people were in that upper room? 130, 140, something like that. That must have been a big room, amen? Amen. And look where Jesus was born. Everything else was full. He still got somewhere. Amen. It mightn't have been the best place, but it was okay for him. And so I want to encourage you today. Don't give up on your miracle. Miracles can happen at any time, any place. So Father, today, I'm just going to finish up now. Father, today, I declare miracles will come from heaven for people here today and people watching online today. You are still the miracle working God. Thank you, Lord. You have never stopped 
healing. You have never stopped releasing miracles. In Jesus' name, be miracleized today. Thank you. Amen. All right. Now we're going to show some videos of what's coming up here. I'm not dancing on any of them, so that'll be okay. But if I get enough requests, I will. And, uh, actually, that's another miracle because I've got no feeling on my left side. <laughs> when my legs hit the ground, I, shouldn't, I should be folding. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. We got some. Oh, we've got some nighttime miracles. You can't see them at the moment. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stacy Campbell. I'm so excited Hi, to invite you to the healing rooms of the Santa Maria Valley on Friday night, all day Saturday, November 22nd to 23rd with Chuck Pierce and Dutch Sheets. They are doing a nationwide event calling the church to mobilize for harvest. And I will be speaking and I just feel like in the spirit, it's such an important time. It's time to plow. We long to live with purpose. Our hearts search for significance. And deep inside, we know we are meant for more. Designed to draw near to God, created to be fully alive in Christ, to live with supernatural power, authority, and leadership, to see signs, wonders, and miracles. God placed these desires in your heart to draw you to Him. Your personal story found within His. The Ignite Internship is committed to helping you in your journey with your Heavenly Father, equipping you to fulfill your destiny and ignite greater passion for Him. 